Hi my friends, welcome back to another week of painting. This week I'm going to paint something, uh, just a nice simple landscape. Um, it's for a very good supporter of mine, uh, Dave. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for your suggesting um, a lovely French vineyard. Uh, vineyard, my apologies, a nice vineyard. That is the tutorial this week, a nice vineyard. So um, you could use a lot of techniques in this. It's just a nice landscape, okay? Nice, distant, soft, you know, misty kind of hills off in the distance and some nice vineyard then in the front with a little building in the middle, okay? So that's the theme this week. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I want to show you something that I'm working on here. We did a Zoom lesson yesterday. I did one with um, a one-to-one -one with um, a fellow artist. And I want to show you how we're getting on. This is um, a lovely sky that we're working on okay now it's part one and basically we just did a lot of this with the palette knife okay and we're going to come along now again in the next lesson and put lovely white clouds and some highlight hitting the bottom of the clouds um i just wanted to show you some nice kind of techniques there with the knife just kind of softening the paint across the canvas with the knife so um it's kind of turning out pretty nice so far uh, we have a lot to do, but it's great fun. So I just wanted to show you that, see what you think. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in doing Zoom lessons with me, one-to-one -one Zoom lessons, just send me an email with the email address below. I'd be delighted. So we'll have a bit of fun, a bit of crack, a bit of banter, um, you know, talk about painting and paint as we, as we talk as well. So it's great fun. If you're interested, just let me know, okay? All right, enough with uh, me blabbering on. Let's go and have a bit of fun with a nice painting here. I have everything set up. So um, yeah. Grab your stuff if you want to follow me along. Let's go and paint and have some fun. Okay, here we go. Um, there is a reference photograph. Isn't that lovely? Uh, it might look complicated, but we're going to simplify it and make it just a lovely, um, colourful landscape. Okay, just let's have a bit of fun with this. Now, I have a canvas here as 20 inches by 13. So, what I did was, I, what I did was, I just bought, I purchased a 16 by 20 canvas board and i just cut three inches off of it okay so um so it's 20 by 13 and i primed it once i must give it a very light rub it's very very fine sandpaper okay i did undercoat this and it's still a little kind of rough so i'm just going to give it a rough set very quick sand with this okay one quick rub and that just takes the roughness off of the canvas and it makes it lovely, lovely and smooth. There, much better, much better. Um, so let's have a bit of fun with this. Okay, I have colours here. I have titanium white, burnt cyanide, cadmium yellow pale, naples yellow, phthalo blue, lamp black, cadmium red, alizarin crimson and some burnt umber. Okay. That's all I feel I need really for this. Um, so let's go and have a bit of fun with this. Now I'm thinking large stubby, okay? Large stubby brush. And let's just fill in the sky. It's a nice warm sky, isn't it? Kind of a violet sort of um mauve kind of a sky. So I'll take some white and I'm painting onto a dry canvas, okay? Uh, sometimes I do wet the canvas, but we're painting this in small sections, though, so we don't really need to dampen the canvas. Some titanium white and a touch of phthalo blue. Very, very strong colour, that phthalo blue. And a hint of crimson, I think, into that. And we're going to paint a nice, warm, mauve -y kind of a sky, okay? And I'm using just tiny amounts of colour. I only need, we only need a little bit because, um, you know, it's only a tiny, tiny part of a sky that we're painting. So I'm just going to mix a little, tiny amounts, a little more crimson. And I'm pulling tiny, tiny amounts of colour out with the corner of my brush here. Look, just tiny amounts. Because it only needs to be um, a tiny, tiny amount of paint. Thin coat, okay? So we have a nice kind of a mauve there. Now let's just take a look at that. Okay, I might take a touch more crimson in that. To make it nice and pinky. Make a nice soft sunsetty kind of a colour. So it's going, the sun is kind of going down perhaps. Um, and it's casting a nice soft colour across the sky. Okay, a touch more of the phthalo. 
let's just go across with that now that's lovely and you see the way the paint is moving lovely and smoothly across this perfect that's just what i need i think maybe a little bit more blue i think it needs a touch more blue just up up on top top up there and another touch of crimson i might just make this slightly slightly darker uh, it's kind of tricky just to get the color right sometimes you just need to mix and mix and mix until you get what you want okay that's probably better there okay now just going to across a little bit of the canvas okay because the sky is very high up the horizon is very very high up on the sky so we don't have to put too too much too far down so a little like that i'm going to dampen my brush and i'm going to just introduce a little bit more crimson towards the end of the sky just a little okay i don't want to go too crazy with blue in this sky not a tiny amount of crimson and of course you can download the reference photograph if you like just go to my reference photographs and uh download it whatever you like you can take what you like off of it there's plenty there to choose from so just download some and um you can have them for yourself then as a reference okay now a little bit of white and crimson just along the base there um okay let me just make sure now everything is looking good all right that's looking fairly good okay um onto those distant those very distant little uh tree lines off in the distance now i'm thinking should i use this or should i go with a thinner brush um okay i'm gonna go to a slightly smaller brush a number 14 stubby brush okay if you don't have a number 14 um a medium will do just fine or if you have a large kind of a flat pointed brush so you can see it's not too kind of bushy and let's make a little color for that distant i'm thinking again just phthalo blue and crimson i would imagine uh let's take a nice amount of each of those and look i'm not making it very thick so i have a bit of thinners in this and we want this to kind of go off into the distance so a little bit more kind of on the blue side i would suggest little touch of white and the white really is only to thicken it up kind of just make it a bit more creamy um that's the kind of word i'm looking for creamy more creamy let's just go along and now again i'm not copying the photograph exactly okay but i just want to get a nice reference a nice similarity with the the photograph okay and these are really only a suggestion of some trees off in the distance i'm just doing this with my brush upright and this is only um i'm just doing this now just to get it done kind of to get it all in quickly you see what i mean so just like that and you could even soften it off into the sky as well in some parts if you like Then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Okay, first of all, um, let me just bring that down just a little more. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take some phthalo blue, right? And I'm going to take some white. And what I'm going to do is create a little bit of a kind of a mist off in the distance there. So what we have now is, we have one layer behind the other so so each one is going to have a kind of a small layer of mist just at the bottom okay so i'm just simply taking some white and adding some white in to that that's all i'm doing okay little bit of white and i'll show you now in just a moment what i'm going to do with the fan brush okay let me take a bit more white i put a bit more white in there so you see we're slowly then kind of building up the layers okay that's fine just nice and simple let me get a fan brush i'm going to take a fan brush okay a nice clean fan brush dampen it dry it and what i'm going to do then is i'm simply going to take a little phthalo blue and a little crimson okay just a little amount tiny bit of white in there just a tiny it's really a very dry brush and let me just see if i can get this correct now i'm just going to go along the tops of those and just put a few little uprights in there okay i basically just want to kind of break it up a little okay 
and I'm using the paint that's already on it just to create just little dabs of colour up along the top and you can even soften it into the sky as well just to create just to add to the mix okay just upright like this all the way along that just gives you a nice little impression of a little tree line off in the distance then I'm going to take my soft brush my soft blender brush and just pull them down and soften them in to that white underneath okay that's a nice simple suggestion of some trees way 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 off in the distance all right okay let's go again i'm going to go with a slightly darker color and a slightly warmer color this time so i'll take more crimson and a little more phthalo but i'm kind of adding more sort of a pinkish kind of a color to it this time a plum let's say a plum yes and i'm just going to go along and go up there into that tree line you know i don't want the lines to be very definite um and very sharp you know i want it to kind of softly merge into the background color just kind of every here and there do you know what i mean okay and then we can just go like this and go right up then high like that okay and you can see the way I'm using this very dry kind of technique. There's not a lot of turpentine in the mix. It's quite kind of dry, so I'm dragging it across the canvas. And when we get over here, I'm going to darken it slightly, okay? I'm going to take a little more phthalo and a little more crimson. I just want to go a little bit darker around here. And again, I'm not copying the photograph exactly. It's just... A loose kind of a reference to what we're painting okay soften that down let's take a hint of crimson into that so already so now we all already have nice little layers kind of going across I'm not going to come down too far with this because I want to push a little bit of mist in this one as well and i'm just breaking up the edge just ever so slightly here and there okay and again i'll go out my fan brush i'll take a little turpentine this time i think in my fan brush just to help the paint um land on the canvas a little bit better okay just to kind of take it off the can off off the brush rather a little bit better okay Now, so what I'm going to do then is leave it at that and I'm going to just soften some of them down. And what I'm going to do then is take more phthalo blue, a thin amount of phthalo blue and white and just let's put a nice, in fact let's take a hint of crimson as well. Let's put a nice soft colour down there. I'm thinking actually a little more on the crimson side, yes? So a bit more pink, nice soft pink down the bottom like that, just very quickly. Don't be too particular about all of this, you know, just grab some white, grab a little crimson and just pop it in like that. And I'm going to kind of soften this up then, just going around in little circles with the tip of my brush and creating a nice swirly little kind of a movement to imagine that the mist is kind of go, moving across the landscape so it's not just a flat kind of a mist it's kind of moving and swirling you can see it moving across the landscape there so it's just a nice simple idea of a little mist off in the distance okay now what I'm going to do again is just very gently soften some of that in. I don't want to lose that movement too much. So just very gently soften it across. Now I do want to fix one or two of these. 
just to soften them in that little bit more. Okay, now that will do fine, really, that's, that's fine for what we need, okay? Now, I'm going to go again with another nice dark colour, so we have these kind of green, greeny kind of grey misty trees, don't we? First, I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to draw a very quick um, reference just for the trees, okay? See these clump of trees here, we have a nice little clump of, clump of trees here and they go kind of off up at an angle just so I know where to roughly stop my mist and all that kind of stuff and then it kind of comes down just like that okay let's just imagine that's more or less what we want let's take I go with the large stubby brush and I want to get this nice greeny bluey color in first slightly damp brush some phthalo blue a little crimson and i may try a hint of cadmium yellow now i don't want to go very bluey green with this so i'm using plenty of crimson in this okay another bit of cadmium yellow because the colors can get very muddy if you're not careful let me just try that okay i think i'll clean the brush very quickly and I will go back into my phthalo blue and perhaps I'll try some cadmium red for a change that'll make it a bit more earthy but I still want the feeling of distance does that make sense and it kind of goes up slightly in the center bit more red let's take a bit more red in this I'm gonna fill that in just down a little bit I take some phthalo blue I'm gonna take some white in this and some crimson so I'm kind of messing with the colours really at the moment, just trying to find the right colours to use. Does that make sense? Um, you know, sometimes if it doesn't work out, if the colour is not exactly what you want, you can kind of pick up other colours and just try different colours and see what happens. A little bit more crimson. That's a nice kind of effect there now, isn't it? and okay let's go across here we have another one i'll just fill this in just like this okay again i won't go too far down because i want to get some nice mist in down here as well so now i'm going to um start adding a few kind of lights into this so I think I'll switch to my slightly smaller brush. I'm going to go with some phthalo blue, a little black, and some cadmium yellow. Bear with me now, just bear with me. And perhaps some Naples yellow as well. I just want to get a nice soft, distant green, okay? Little crimson. And that should give us a nice kind of a softish sort of a green, okay? And I'm going to just sort of put that in here and there into that blue colour that we just put on. And just kind of try and create some impressions of trees, upright trees. We just go along the tops like that. Okay, I'm just going to sit back now and take a quick look at this. All right, that's not bad. Not bad. Okay, and I keep going. I'll add a bit more of that uh, along here, perhaps.
Then what I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to take actually a little touch of Naples yellow into this and maybe a little white. And I'm going to just kind of hit this in some parts to create the impression of the light kind of catching some of these trees over here. Now I know this should be a bit darker and in fact you know what I will do I will darken it first okay I'm going to darken this right down I'm going to take some black some crimson and a hint of cadmium yellow then a touch of blue a touch of phthalo blue We'll darken that down just a little first. And like, let's take a bit more phthalo blue actually, a touch of white. Because I want to kind of give the impression of a shadow, but a shadow which is sort of being lit up. Do you understand? Does that make sense? So a shadow which is kind of being lit up, really. Go with a bit more, a bit more blue. And I'm going to just soften a bit of blue into that, just here and there. Okay, so you can see, I, you know, we're kind of changing as we go. Um, you know, if if you, if you feel it's, it's not working, then just change. Just clean it with a bit of tissue or just clean your brush and start again. That's sometimes the easiest thing to do. If it's not, you know, if you feel like it's not working, just clean your brush and start again. Add a new colour. And just go in here and get some of that nice dark colour in there and I'm going to mix up a nice rich plum again I'm going to go just along the tops of these with a little touch of that plum just to give it a little bit more darkness just on the top okay just here and there I'm just holding my brush in an upright fashion and I'm just kind of dabbing it along okay that's all I'm doing. All right. Okay. So I'm going to dampen my brush, give it a rub with some tissue, and then I'm going to start adding this light color down here. So I'll just make sure it's relatively clean. Then take some titanium white, Naples yellow, lots of Naples yellow. Now we'll come down here and put some of that across the bottom like that first. Don't worry if your brush is not completely clean, okay? It's, it'll be fine. Across the bottom like this. And then what I tend to do is I soften it up into the colour above. So, I just take my brush, go around in little circles, and I soften it up. You see that? And you can do as much or as little of this as you like, okay? If you're nervous about doing this, you really don't have to do it. You could just bring your trees all the way down. Um, but I, I think this is a lovely way of just creating some depth and some distance in a painting. Just a little bit of mist here and there. Okay, and I'll take some more white. I'm going to just sort of add a little bit of white on its own to this side over here. And I'm thinking ahead because I want a nice bright background for those trees see those nice dark trees on the left so i want a nice bright background for those so plenty of mist on the left hand side over here and again little circles and leave it just sort of disappear up into those trees overhead now if you feel you want to soften it a bit more just use your blender brush look And come over here and soften all of this. I'm going to just kind of go in random movements, just to kind of pull it down and soften everything together. But I'm not finished yet, okay? I still have another step to go. 
Okay, I'm just going to stop there now just for one moment. And always stop and kind of look as you're going just to see how you're going and see how it's coming on. Now, taking my medium brush again, a little more Naples yellow. So what I have is kind of a very soft green, very light, light green on my brush. I'm going to give the impression of some lighter trees popping through the mist here and there. Look, see that? Isn't that lovely? Just popping through here and there. Of course, you you know you can use a fan brush for this if you like. If you're more comfortable with a fan brush, um, that would do absolutely perfect. But I find the fan brush sometimes tends to be very fine, sort of rough. Very, it's very hard to get kind of these lines. So a simple flat brush like this often works perfectly. A simple flat brush, even if it's not completely flat, you see, it just gives you a lovely texture. And it gives you a lovely impression of some little tree lines, um, all that kind of stuff. Put a few over into this one. So, in other words, then we're carrying the trees right across all the way. Let's sort of disappear off into the tree line there. And you can see now the way I picked up some of that dark colour there, you see. So if I go up into this, pick up some of the dark colour and then bring it down. You can see we have some nice dark ones in as well. So, it's kind of... The, the paint on the canvas is helping itself. Does that make sense? So I'm picking up some of the colours as I go along. And look, we could even put a couple of darker ones over here. Pop a few in there. But I just want to be careful not to kind of overdo this. So what I'm going to do next now is I'm just going to add a little bit more mist to the bottom of those. Just a touch, okay? Just, just a little touch. And if, in fact, I might even use some cadmium yellow pale with some white. And that should give us a nice bright, sunny kind of a glow down at the bottom, okay? Ah, there we go. That's better now, isn't it? A nice bright kind of a sunny glow. A little bit more cadmium yellow, some white. And you can keep going as much as you like with all of this, okay? There's really, I suppose, there's really no rules in this. It's just a case of having some fun and just going for it, okay? Just don't be afraid. Pick up your brushes and just put some paint on. See what happens. If it doesn't work out, you can just clean your canvas and start again. So don't be too worried. Okay. Let's leave it at that for now. And do you know what I'm going to do? Because, do you know when you're painting and you're looking at your artwork as you're going and, you know, you're changing your mind about certain things and, you know, that kind of a thing. So what I'm going to do is, firstly, I'm just going to soften. Just soften the mist, soften some of these trees in. Firstly, okay. Again, down the bottom here. It's a very, very soft makeup brush, a powder brush. Is that what it's called, ladies? A powder brush. Um, you know, if you don't have one, Fellas, if you don't have this, pop upstairs to your partner's makeup drawer and just take a loan of it. You won't even notice it's gone, I promise. Okay, he or she. They might not even notice it's gone. So, go on, go for it. While they're not looking, go up and take one. They have plenty, don't they? Isn't that right? Now, I'm just gonna, what I'm going to do is soften a little bit of this harshness away. Just very gently, okay? I want to create this misty feeling in the painting and I want to sort of push all of this off into the distance. So I'm just running my soft foundation and powder brush over these lines very, very gently. Look, just to take the edge out and it just gives you that lovely mist. There we go. Look, at that. that's just what I wanted. Okay. That's just what I wanted. I think that's enough. And in fact, you could even soften this into the sky really a lot just really softening it in so you know you're you're softening it in but you're not losing the shape does that make sense there now i think that's much better nice soft misty landscape okay moving along 
Um, I'm going to leave out these little bunch of trees here because I don't really think they're doing anything for the scene. So I'll just carry on and start doing these nice big rich trees down here. So I'm thinking um, the next thing to do would be perhaps let's just fill in this with some nice green. A nice green base coat, okay? A base colour, as they say, or an underpainting, whatever you would like to call it. That's what it is. So I'll take my large stubby brush and I'm going to dampen it slightly. Then I'm going to go for some cadmium yellow pale. I've cadmium yellow pale and a little Naples yellow just to soften it and take the take the bite out of the yellow. And then I'm going to take a hint of burnt sienna because it's a warm kind of a green, isn't it? So let's just uh, have a look at this now and see. And I don't want to go kind of too rich with this because I want to complement the distant. I want to complement um, the mistiness in the scene. So I don't want to go too rich and too dark with these greens. I'm going to just let this soften away out there, look. And in fact, you know what I will do then? Just dry my brush very quickly. Take some Naples yellow. And I'm going to just go across here. And I'm going to kind of almost soften this into the distance as well. Look. Now, I like that. So you can see there's almost no boundary. It just, your eyes will look at the painting and they will just keep going off into that distant. I think that's a bit better. So creating some nice perspective in this painting today. I hope you're enjoying it, by the way. Um, Dave is a very good supporter of mine. He's been supporting me for years. And he was asking me just could I try something like this for him. So yeah, I'd be delighted, Dave. Thank you so much. And I do love painting stuff like this myself as well. Okay, little burn sienna into that. Again, the burn sienna just warming it ever so slightly, okay? You know, I don't want to go with very, very dark, cold greens in this. I want some nice warm, warm greens. So that's why I'm using burn sienna. If I wanted a very cold kind of a green, I would use phthalo blue. Um, with cadmium yellow on its own, but to warm it slightly, a little burnt sienna or burnt umber, or even a bit of crimson, that would really warm your colours up. So let's try it, look. Some cadmium yellow, a little phthalo blue. You can see how that's very, very cold, isn't it? It's really cold, wintry kind of, a, almost a wintry green kind of a colour, very cold. So let's just take some burnt sienna. And immediately we have a nice autumn warm kind of a green. A warm brownie kind of a green. And soften that across up in there. And another thing I'm going to do with this painting is, if you look around here you can see there's more vineyards, bushes, going, kind of white, grape bushes going across here. I'm going to leave that because I just want to focus on this big band of bushes down at the end. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult really because we are only creating an impression, okay? I keep saying it, but that's really all I'm trying to achieve is a nice impression of this scene. I don't want to be going way over the top um, in terms of detail and that kind of thing. So I'm just keeping it nice and loose. And this will be a nice tutorial now, just as a general tutorial for a landscape, okay? You don't, you know, have to copy it exactly. You could just, put some trees or something in. If you're a beginner and you're worried about all this drawing and stuff, you know, just put a couple of rows of trees in there um, and it will be fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that and go on to my trees. Lovely, lovely trees. First, what I'm gonna do is just with a pencil, um, I can see there's kind of a footpath or something. I'm just gonna put the impression of the walkway coming down just so I know where it is, okay? And this field then it kind of comes in front of the barn or the, the little, whatever you call it, just go around there, okay? So I know then where I'm going. Now this is coming on quite nice so far, isn't it? Okay, um, I will, I think I will just stick with this brush for now and we'll move on to some smaller brushes very soon. 
but first i want to make a nice rich dark green i always when i'm painting little bundles of trees like this i start with the darker color okay and i put on my highlights so phthalo blue cadmium yellow and i might take some burnt umber in this and that would then warm it up and give you a nice warm dark kind of a green okay burnt umber lots of burnt umber and plenty of cadmium yellow now i have quite thick paint here all right it is a little bit there's a tiny touch of thinners in this but it's very thick still and i'm gonna start let's see where they start now they kind of come over a fair bit don't they let me say start around there okay and what happens is the color i put on starts mixing with that white mist so it immediately starts kind of going slightly soft on you the color so i'm going to put plenty of paint on plenty of cadmium yellow plenty of burnt umber in fact you could even use burnt umber and cadmium yellow on its own that would make a lovely warm warm green okay and i'm just going to very generally put in where i think the trees are kind of coming across like that and i'm going to just fill in this area don't worry about the little barns and all that kind of stuff we can do all that later okay i just want to focus on getting this nice little row of trees in let me get some black as well i'm going to get some nice darker shades in there bit more black bit of cadmium yellow And you see i'm just kind of popping in some darks just here and there because we will be putting some lights over this very soon okay and just sort of continues up here for a little bit doesn't it and then it fizzles out and we have a couple of nice ones then up around here as well i'm going to use a smaller brush for those smaller ones up there in a moment okay just going to go up a little bit more on that side all right so we have that much done the next thing i'm going to do is get a smaller brush let me find a nice little brush for this um ba -ba -bum. okay i have one here i'll try this a nice medium flat brush nice soft one there we go i'm going to dampen that and i'm going to just put in some of these trees up here okay i'm going to go with some black and some cadmium yellow with a hint of cyanide okay lots of thick paint and i'm just going to kind of give the impression of the tree like that i'm really i really am being just very loose with all of this i'll take a bit more black hint of blue and again some yellow because there's really lots of dark areas in these trees And again you know I'm, I'm not even worried too much about all the detail and that kind of stuff okay i'm just getting a little impression of the scene now i'll take some cadmium yellow on my brush and i'm going to just pop in some little lights here and there and i will come back to these again okay in a moment uh, with a fine pointy brush so what i'm going to do is start adding some really bright colors some real real bright bright yellows onto all of these and i think i get away with using the same brush i'm just going to take lots of cadmium yellow 
I'll take the tiniest touch of blue and I'm going to take some white, okay? In fact, I'll go with Naples yellow instead of white. Now, I really want to catch the light in this landscape, okay? So I'm just going to go on the outside edges and really catch some light. It would probably be easier if you left all of this dry first before doing this because it wouldn't mix as much into the trees but I hope you can see all of this okay and I'm gonna go here softening it down just dabbing with my brush okay and you know don't be rushing it don't try and get it all done in one go I know a lot of beginners will just go along and do this all the way across like that like that and you just it just merges together and everything looks like one you know uh, just take our time look and do it in little sections at a time don't be rushing there's no rush it's not going anywhere just dab 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 coming down and keep cleaning your brush that's very important because You know, it just stops all the dirty colours mixing. Um, let's come down here and put a nice bright one. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Nice bright one in and then soften it back into the shadow side, you see? Like that. Isn't that lovely? I like that. That's, you know, and it's just nice and simple to do. It's not very, very difficult. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of cyanide to some of them. Let's grab a bit of cyanide. And, yeah, let's add a nice little bit of cyanide in here just to warm it up slightly. That warms it up and it just complements everything. Now, I'll clean my brush again and go right into some yellow on its own. That will give us a real nice glow in some of the trees, okay? And I will probably go lighter again very soon, okay? But for now, I'm just pulling in little bits at a time. I'm gonna come over here, and I just wanna add a little touch of light to some of these as well. And carrying on down, creating little bushes, that kind of thing. Let's get some Naples yellow, and I'm gonna put some little touches of Naples yellow on some of these. Okay, so look, you know, I think it's just a case really of just having a bit of fun with all of this. Just have a bit of fun. I'm going to take some more yellow, at least some more yellow on my brush. Or on my palette, my, my apologies. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a cup of coffee because I, I'm losing my marbles. A cup of coffee might wake me up a little bit. Isn't that right? Let's take some white and some cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna come in here and pop that bright color in. Just like that, I'm gonna soften it down. Lots of paint on the brush. Okay, and that really is only just to sit all of these down. That's the only reason I'm doing this. It's just it give it a bit of a base to sit on. So, it tends to make more sense then, doesn't it? And what I'm going to do is add a couple of tiny, tiny little branches over on these trees over here. So let me see, have I a really small, small brush? I did have one earlier. The smallest little one I had. Tiny, tiny, tiny little small round brush, okay? And I'm going to take some black and some burnt umber. And a nice bit of thinners in this now. It's just really just to give a tiny impression of some tree trunks and that kind of thing off in the distance over there. You'll probably hardly even see these anyway, but I think it's nice just to give a little impression of a few in the distance. Just 
just to add one here and there you know you don't have to go absolutely crazy with any of this you see it's just a little small impression that's all um, okay now I said earlier I was going to put some real bright ones on these I'm going to put some real bright bright ones on these now so let's take some cadmium yellow let's go here and some titanium white and I might even take the tiniest touch of phthalo blue I don't want it a yellowy white I want it like a bright whitey kind of a green does that make a kind of a bit of sense I hope it does so let's go and pop a little touch of that on and really make these trees and bushes really kind of pop against the sunlight catching the sunlight and they're really kind of popping out tiny touch more blue and i'm taking tiny 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 amounts at a time okay really small amounts um this one would be quite nice i think lit up against the sun and a couple just along the back as well I put a couple in around that field in there just to add one or two and I'm going to put then some real bright color on some of these here okay so you can see I'm covering some of the tree trunks then as well all right now I think that's not bad I'll leave it at that I'm going to put in just a light color for some an impression of a footpath along here okay burnt umber Naples yellow and some white and I'm just going to go like that okay just to give that impression of a little pathway coming down and you see what you can do then with a small detail brush is you can just add tiny tiny little features in here and there just to add a bit of interest so it could be anything you know it's a fence or you see whatever the case may be it's simply just to add a little bit of interest into the painting try a bit of burnt sienna so there could be a little cabin or something there off in the distance do you understand what i mean by that uh, it's just really just to help the eye move along that's kind of all I'm trying to do help the eye move along through the painting little bit of a separation there you know just to, like that and you can kind of see what I mean it's just a nice simple little impression okay I'm gonna do the barn and then we'll call this part one finished because I am terrified in case my camcorder well I'm, I'm actually using my phone today I'm terrified of that going dead or losing power or losing memory or something so we're up to around an hour almost which is quite good let's mix a nice color for these barns cadmium red born cyana I'm gonna really make these pop the born cyana will give it just that browny red kind of uh, a color perfect for these types of barns and let's go start with this one here okay and that comes along and it goes down like that doesn't it okay very nice isn't it and this one then i'm going to paint the front of the building and look you can again you can leave all those trees to dry okay if that helps just let them dry for a, a day or two and that would really help okay i'm just impatient i just like to kind of paint wet into wet like this you know what i mean that's just the way i've always been take some burnt umber cadmium red 
get a nice dark ready brown color in there and we add a little bit of tone to this one as well and leave a fizzle out okay that's not bad next we got a very bright color on this stone tree so i'm going to go with cadmium red on here and some cadmium yellow okay then i might take a little touch of naples with that so it's giving us a very bright orangey kind of a red okay it's a sunlit color so let's go like that and then down like that yes i'm happy with that we we'll lose the same color for the front of this one here and then i'll clean that quickly and put a nice darker color on the back of that so burnt umber with cadmium red okay put that on the back of this one here and you don't have to be perfect with this because these are very old barns they're probably there hundreds of years and they're not going to be perfectly straight etc so don't be too perfect with all your lines the next thing I'm going to do is take some crimson with a little black, okay? And I'm going to start adding some little details to some of these. So let's imagine the eave of the roof here is casting a little shadow on that side, for example. I'll put a little bit down there. And we'll just put a little bit along there. I'm going to darken this side of the barn here and just soften it through. So you can see really kind of what I'm doing is just giving the impression of some little detail. That's kind of all I'm doing really. Look, the impression of a little door. And we have an opening here. So you can be very, very loose with your brush when doing this. You don't have to be absolutely perfect. Okay. Um, let's just put a little bit of a darkness in there. Just to help sort of join them together okay let's take some black again suggesting a little detail okay let's bring it down a bit down here and i'll take a little bit of white very very quick very loose suggest little touches of white could be containers or anything like that um suggestion of a window there you can kind of see what i'm doing it's just a very loose impression of just little bits and pieces and i pop a little bit of green then a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue just in around here so imagine there's a little bush well there is a little bush down in around there let's take a bit more blue and a bit of black give that some darkness in there you see i've been very very loose with this very quick and then i'll just take some yellow little dab of yellow the tip of the brush and just add a bit of foliage here and there and i leave it at that okay i'm happy enough um i'll take some yellow actually with some cyanide and i'll just bring a little touch of that across here just to kind of help Again, sit everything down. And you can just use these techniques as well now in your own in your own little way, okay? It's just an easy way of painting a landscape and keeping things simple, not being too over the top.
with everything. Just keep it nice and simple. Okay. And my friends, I think I'll call this part one of this little landscape finished. A little bit of shadow, some of these. And the stronger the shadow, the more impact it will have against the sun, okay? So just remember, lots of shadow. Don't be shy with your shadows. And there we are. Thank you so much for watching. Let me turn the camera here. I hope it doesn't fall or anything like that. Let's hope it doesn't. Can I turn the camera? I don't think I can. Okay. Duh, 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 duh. And disconnect my power cord. And there we are. I hope that's not too in your face. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Part 2 coming up very, very soon. Uh, don't go anywhere. Thank you for your support. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Lots of colours. And I hope you've learned something about creating mist in the landscape, okay? Nice soft mist. So um, I'll see you very, very soon in part two. Don't go anywhere.